transform GP into your warehouse management system. Um, our, solu uh, excuse me, our solution offers a robust configuration setup and we, we can tailor your interface based on the features and the functionalities that you need and the requirements for your organization. We offer real-time validation, so as the transactions are being captured, um, at the point in time that you actually handle the inventory, um, we're actually completing that validation. This is going to eliminate paper-based redundancy and errors. All of the transactions that we capture are creating transactions or updating directly to Dynamics GP in real time. Panatrack offers solutions to capture inventory activities from receiving, moves, stock counts through the order pick and pack process and we fit multiple industries such as distribution, retail, and manufacturing. Now that was a little bit about Panatrack. I'm now going to turn over um, to, to uh, Chris at Starship at B Technologies to give him give an overview of what his solution does. Thanks, Pam. V Technologies, uh, we've been around since the late 80s, uh, providing integrated shipping solutions for many different ERP and accounting packages. Uh, our focus uh, today is uh, obviously uh, Dynamics GP and uh, taking a look at the pick, pack, and ship functionality that we've developed in conjunction with Panatrack. Um, we also offer integration to some e-commerce platforms. Uh, Amazon is available now. We're also working on eBay, and uh, there's a number of uh, shopping carts and marketplaces that are in the pipeline as well. Uh, along with the uh, shipping functionality for multiple carriers, uh, Starship supports uh, you know, both parcel and freight integration for LTL shipping. Um, we also offer um, snap-ons for many popular EDI solutions as well, such as uh, High Jump, True Commerce, and Redtail. So just a little bit about how we've uh, created this solution together. We've collaborated on uh, creating a uh, data infrastructure inside the Dynamics GP database that has uh, shared tables that contain all of the packed container information and uh, that is basically a repository of data that uh, both solutions can uh, play in the same sandbox where we capture all of the packed container information through the use of a handheld scanner. Um, there's a unique uh, license plate or barcode ID that's assigned to each box and that's a reference field that can be scanned at the point of shipping when you're ready to uh, ship against that sales transaction instead of just going against the document ID that will reference exactly which items have been packed uh, which items have been fulfilled uh, through the uh, Panatrack fulfillment process and uh, you're, you're not having to duplicate your efforts when you get to the manifesting stage. And that also makes that information available to EDI solutions as well so they can uh, call any information that's required for the ASN uh, from those shared tables. And this gives you a complete end-to-end -end order fulfillment system. Thanks, Chris. Um, for our demo today, we're going to actually be covering uh, the, the order pick and order pack, and then I'll be completing the order shipment. Uh, the pick and the pack is going to be presented by myself for uh, the Panatracker GP solution, and then the shipment processing, um, I'm going to turn back over to Chris at that point in time. So a little bit about our order pick and pack. Uh, we do offer multiple workflow options uh, for our solution. So we have um, our standard order fulfillment, which also offer, offers the ability to do a single step pick and pack process. Um, or you can break that up into the two step process that we're going to be covering today. So we're going to actually be fulfilling the order and then completing that verification and pack of the order. We do also have a alternate option that does a two step process using the multiple bin features within Dynamics GP. In that case, the first pick is actually a bin move from a stock bin location to a staging bin location, and the second step completes the order fulfillment um, for the pack. Uh, both of those solutions basically operate and do the follow the same steps in the workflow path, just different uh, back-end systems that get hit, or back-end transactions. And each of those process steps, regardless of what you're using, will update the batch ID on the sales order to identify the pick and pack status. 
Um, I'm going to start out by we're going to do that two-step pick and pack process and we're going to be starting out with the pick where we're going to be presented a pick list. I have mine set in a bin sort order um, based on just a standard default bin assignment for the items in Dynamics. Um, and that's how our system is going to be um, set up as we start the, the pick. And I've got the sales order that I'm going to show you for Dynamics here very quickly. Uh, the batch ID, as I mentioned, that we're going to be updating right now is currently set to ready to pick. And we are using a separate order fulfillment process um, for our orders. So this is how we know which items that still need to be picked. We also do also update the quantity to invoice on those orders so that if you're uh, handling partial shipments and you need to invoice those partials, you're all set to go without any additional needs within this, the sales order itself. And I'll bring over my handheld and we'll walk through the order pick process. I'm going to go ahead and scan my order number to identify which order I'm going to be picking and this is going to present my pick list. Um, as I mentioned, uh, I've got mine set up so that it is going to be actually in a bin order to make it a logical walk through the warehouse to be able to complete this pick. I'm going to go ahead and start my pick and this is going to take me into the validation screen. We try to keep the user interface very simple so there's not a lot of overhead in capturing and we're validating that the right and correct items are being picked as the user is actually scanning them. So I'll go ahead and scan my first item, enter in my quantity. Now if I was doing a single order pick, um, I would then also be prompted for the shipping box at this time, but we're going to actually be handling that in our second step. Once that first item is picked, complete, it automatically took me to the next item. This item is serial tracked, so now I'm going to be prompted to capture the serial numbers. And as you can tell, I can very efficiently capture those very quickly. And now I move to the next item, so I can go ahead and scan that item, enter in my quantity, and then for my final item, I do have the ability then to have a lot tracked item. So for those tracking lot numbers, uh, we also add some additional validation. So if the lot uh, is going to be expiring soon, we can give the user a warning. If you want to make sure you're picking the oldest inventory or the soonest to expire lot, we do have some validation and configurations supporting that as well. Once my pick is complete, it's going to take me back to the pick list. It identifies everything's been complete, completed with green check marks. And now I can go ahead and submit my order pick back to Dynamics. And this is going to then update my Dynamics GP sales order. Um, and it's going to also be able to update the quantities fulfilled along with the lot details and all the information that I captured. So as you can see, my sales order in Dynamics, my batch ID is identified completely picked, and of course my quantity fulfilled on all my line items has been updated also. Now I'm going to go over and move over to the next step as the actual order pack. Now that I've got assembled all of my items in front of me and my, my staging area, I'm going to be able to pack those into each of the boxes. Um, I'm going to be uh, having a unique serialized license plate or shipping box ID that I'm going to affix to my pallet or my box or my container. Um, and that's going to be what identifies for the shipping solution later when they scan that to be able to identify what's been packed in that box. This is also giving us the ability to automatically confirm the order um, has been picked as in the way it was expected to be picked. Now we do have a couple different options here as far as the workflow and how you might want to define this. Um, in this case, I'm going to be actually picking one box at, or uh, packing to one box at a time. Uh, for some of our customers, they might have multiple box open and they're identifying which box they're going to drop in uh, the items into as they're picking or packing it by item. So again, you have different ways that you can configure it based on what's best for you. So I'm going to scan my first item that I picked up. I'm going to enter in my quantity and now I'm going to scan that shipping box. 
Now you'll see that shipping box is now a read-only and it locks down because I'm just going to be working on this one box. I'm going to scan my lot number in this case. It's going to confirm that's the lot number I picked. And I've got a couple more items. This one serialized item can fit in there. And then I've got my one last item that I can tuck two of this one 24X ID into my um, my bo last box there. Now that that box is full, I'm going to move on to the next box. So I'm going to actually close that box or complete that box. Um, and now I'm going to be able to scan and start adding into my next box. And we've got the rest of those serialized items to capture. And now that we're all done with that, I'm going to go ahead and close that box. Everything's complete. I do have a review screen that I can confirm and review everything that I've packed. And now again, I'm going to submit this back to Dynamics. It will update the batch ID on the Dynamics database on the sales order to identify that now that second step has been completed. And we've actually added in some additional tables that, manage that ver manages that verification uh, process. We know what items have been verified. And then we've also updated those ship pack tables so now that we can have that nice clean handoff to Chris um, and the Starship uh, team to be able to process the shipment for these, this particular order. In addition, we also have the ability to automatically print a packing list and a bill of lading. This can also be done as part of your shipping uh, side that um, Chris is going to be showing you. So you do have a couple different options that you can define there as far as what you want to do for a workflow. Uh, and we also do have the option to print a shipping box label. Now this isn't going to be your tracking number. It's not going to be your UPS or FedEx labels. Um, it's just going to be an ID that's got some more header level information like the order number, uh, maybe the customer ID. A lot of times customers will add this additional label for um, outside of the Starship solution that might be somebody that's picking up an order uh, that's going to be a, a pickup in the back or somebody that has internal trucks that might be going out for deliveries. So we do have that as an option as well. So those all can be um, configured if needed. Now that that part is done, I'm going to turn it over and it's going to take a, give this over to Chris and he's going to show you how this order is now processed in Starship. Thanks, Pam. I'm going to go ahead and share my desktop here. And first I'm going to take you through an example of uh, what Starship would look like uh, just shipping against GP so that you can compare that against the packed container shipments that's coming out of Panatracker. So with, uh, with Starship and just plain old GP, uh, you're typically working off of a document ID, an order, invoice, quote, number. Um, there's an area here where you can scan that in or enter it. There's also a browse screen where you can come in and pick an order. I'm just going to go ahead and pick one of our transactions here. And uh, without any uh, box information, Starship's just going to retrieve the order header information, a list of line items. Uh, we are going to validate the address. We'll catch that if it's a bogus address here. We'll just say ignore that here. And uh, you can see that there's just a list of line items. There's no box information natively within GP. This is where the real value of the Panatrack uh, Starship combo comes in. So we're, I'm going to switch this over to uh, Panatrack and the packed sales transactions. So when you add the interface to Starship for uh, the packed sales transactions, it allows you to reference that unique barcode ID that's assigned the license plate at the point that you do the pick and pack. So each of those containers will have a unique barcode that you can scan. Uh, you can of course do the look up here as well and, and pick any of the orders and there's a number of different sorts that are available. Uh, filters that could be added, but typically you're just going to scan in the barcode off of the license plate and Starship just kind of takes over from there. So I'll enter that uh, first uh, license plate number here and Starship will bring over all the packed container detail, fill in all the order data from the GP sales transaction, and over here on the left it gives you kind of a snapshot of what you're working with, uh, the company you're connected to, uh, the shipment record that we're accessing, uh, you have uh, the carrier and service level, which we will do value translations from the GP ship method from either the order header or the line item level. You can set that up as a preference. 
Uh, your billing preference, um, uh, whether it's prepaid, collect, third party, we can map that as well from the customer card or the order header. Uh, so you can trigger that dynamically with each sales, transa sales transaction. Uh, time of transit here will display whenever you can anticipate that the product is going to arrive by, and you can use that in your cost analysis on when you need it to get there by. Uh, return address, that's the sender in Starship, so if you have multiple entities or different companies that you do fulfillment on behalf of, you can reflect those, and you can trigger that directly from uh, GP as well. Then you have the recipient information, that's the ship to address where this is going to. Um, Starship will add value there by validating the address as it's coming over from either the order header or the line item level in GP. And Starship also has the ability to update any of the address fields. So if you want to correct the address and allow Starship to write back any of the corrected address information, we can reach back into GP and update that info dynamically. Uh, down below here, you'll see in your packaging view, you have um, your boxes. And we can see exactly which quantities Pam's uh, gone through and picked and packed. All those quantities are fulfilled. We have uh, a record of each of the, uh, the items, uh, any of the uh, lot serial information, as well as the container that it's uh, been packed into. Between the shared database of uh, Panatrack and Starship, you have um, boxes or containers. Starship can uh, consume that data that comes out of the uh, packed container tables, and that can also save any of the dimensions, uh, which is critical with uh, a lot of the new rates that have gone into effect for UPS and FedEx this year where you're being billed by the cubic space that it takes up on the truck, not just um, the actual weight. And that, that applies to all of your packages, including ground now. Starship also has integration to CubaScan scales, where you can pass the package through a scanner, and it'll compare the dimensional weight versus the actual weight. And whichever the higher of those two is, that's what the, the carrier will uh, bill you against. So we can capture that information uh, from the tables. It can be selected here from a drop-down menu, or you could use one of those integrated scales to capture that information. Uh, once you're inside a Starship, you have a number of tabs here. I'll just go through those quickly. You have the packaging, where it gives you, um, you know, a breakdown of what's in each box at the item level. You can see any of the item level fields. Uh, you also have the order information, of course, your return address and your ship to address. When we come to rate shopping, this is where you can do a cost comparison. So we've set it up to go UPS two-day, uh, but the, perhaps there's a, a chance to send this out uh, cheaper. We can go ahead and uh, shop the rates here. So we can do a cost comparison between whichever carriers you uh, want to take a look at, both freight and parcel. Uh, many uh, customers are also looking at the post office as an alternative for an option to save some money on the shipping. And you can look at the pricing here, the time in transit, to make a decision. There's also ship via rules that can be enforced to have Starship take that decision out of the hands of the operator and automatically make that carrier selection for you. We'll go ahead and stick with the um, UPS two-day service that was defined on the sales order. I'll go ahead and process the shipment now. So you have your controls up here in the toolbar. F5 or ship and process will complete the transaction print out our barcoded shipping labels, uh, bill of lading, packing list, any documents that need to be generated out of Starship, uh, if it's going international, your commercial invoice, your NAFTA paperwork, uh, SLI. Uh, here you have a preview of one of our hybrid forms where it has the packing list at the box level and the shipping label on the same, uh, the same sheet of paper. And you can also customize that to add additional reference fields, barcodes, put your logo on there. Uh, any of the documents that are in, within Starship are fully customizable. So we have our second document here. And with that, all the data is going to feed back into GP. Your screen will refresh, and the prompt will take you right back here uh, to the area where you're going to scan in the next license plate number. Now let's take a look back in GP at that sales transaction that we just processed and take a look at some of the results. Uh, there we go. So four main areas that Starship will update out of the box, and then there's also some additional customization options. Um, order header notes, these can be uh, customized for both freight and parcel shipments. There's some standard data that we give you out of the box, but any data that you see on the Starship screen can be inserted into the note here. You can also control the sequence and the tag next to each of the strings of data. 
uh, also puts a header and a footer around our notes. So if there's any data that exists in the notes prior to shipping, um, we'll, we'll you know, work around that. We're not going to wipe anything out that you may have there already. If it's a partial shipment and you're shipping against the sales transaction over time, we'll just keep appending this record so you'll have a, a running log of everything that ships over time. Uh, so it'll tell you when it went out, when it's going to get there, how it was shipped, the billing information, uh, the number of pieces and weight, and then a breakdown of uh, essentially the packing list, which quantities of product were shipped with the tracking information. Uh, Starship can also update the batch ID. So I have uh, Starship set to move this to our shipped batch, and that can be any batch uh, that, uh, that you have available in GP. As soon as you create it, then it's available to tag that batch on the right back. You can use that to help nudge it along your workflow. Uh, the freight information uh, will go here if you choose. The freight can be written back conditionally with any kind of handling fees or discounts that you want to include, and even conditions where you may not charge freight for certain types of customers, certain types of orders or products. Uh, so there's freight rules that are very robust that can add some additional logic to the write back in that case. Uh, you also have the user-defined fields. And Starship will insert tracking information into this table here and that'll give your uh, front office visibility with the ability to track packages right from here. Uh, some other areas that Starship can update, uh, you have a custom write back that can be done to any of the user defined fields here at the order header level within the customer record, uh, the customer card, or any of the uh, item or inventory records. Uh, you also have the ability to update the ship method, as I mentioned with the address validation, also the uh, address field, so if you wanna use the corrected address information to write back and update GP that's available as well. If you max out all those options, Starship also has a SQL extension that can be enabled uh, to add some additional functionality to your uh, Panatrack and Starship integration uh, with the ability to touch other areas of GP such as Extender or if you're using other third-party products such as SalesPad, CRM, Shopping Cart, uh, service database, basically any ODBC data source on the network, we could extend uh, the integration to both read and write data via SQL. So that's essentially what Starship will do there with Panatrack. Just a couple of uh, quick points I wanted to add uh, for some additional uh, utilities that are available that you get with the Starship license. Um, you have, of course, uh, you know, the data that's writing back in the GP, but Starship also has custom email notification that can kind of close the loop with your end users or your customers that uh, need to be notified once the product ships. That can include um, any kind of uh, documents that are created out of Starship, such as the packing list, the bill of lading, copies of any of the labels, those can be inserted as attachments. We'll give you a breakdown here of uh, what was shipped. There's a number of templates that are built in for both freight and parcel. Um, and you can customize that with your logo, links back to your site, um, and different uh, qualifiers and, and rules on when and if you want to actually send the email notifications. We'll pull those emails directly out of the customer card. So hopefully if your customers are checking their email that uh, cuts down on the number of uh, customer service calls you're receiving as to the status of your shipment. Uh, if you have users that don't live inside a GP and they still need access to the tracking information, uh, Starship also provides a dashboard. And that's also a utility that's not licensed, it's freely distributed with the Starship license, gives you the ability to do lookups here. You have uh, full access to shipment history and you can search on any of the uh, common ERP fields that are coming out of GP, such as the PO number, the order, uh, invoice number, customer ID, the date, any number of ways to find the shipment that you're looking for. Um, with that, once you track down the shipment, it gives you access to the tracking here. You can track it with the carrier to get the status, uh, breakdown of the uh, product information, what was shipped, and quantities, and then detail on the charges. So any additional uh, surcharges, any um, handling fees that may have been added, you can see here what your cost was versus the actual applied freight. Uh, some widgets here uh, that give you uh, some ways to slice and dice the data, uh, to drill down into that uh, by status, carrier, location, mode of transport, by user, and your top five customers. And so you have those graphs there, as well as crystal reports uh, built into the uh, dashboard. Uh, so you have the ability to uh, run some custom reports out of Starship as well. And again, that's not a licensed option. It's available to any users in your front office. Uh, there's also the uh, rating utility. Uh, with that, that can extend the rate shopping functionality to your front office users, anyone in customer service, sales, uh, that may need to provide a quote on the freight prior to the shipment actually being generated. Um, gives you the ability here to do rate shopping between both parcel and freight carriers, whichever carrier's options you have 
access to. You'll see that down here below in the rate matrix. And if you're using uh, GP 2013R2 or 2015, this can be called directly from the sales order processing module. There's also a rate API available that can extend this functionality to other areas of your operations, such as your shopping cart, CRM, any point where you may need to call into Starship and get access to the rates. All right, that's all of the functionality that I had prepared to share with everyone today. We can uh, send it back over to Adrian. Thank you so much, Chris and Pam. That was a wonderful presentation. Um, we do have quite a few questions, and I would like to announce some polls as we go through the questions, if I may. So the first poll we have here, we just have two polls, so audience, if you can, just bear with me and answer these questions. It would be extremely helpful on our side. So um, are you interested in learning more about pick and pack solutions? So that would be the Panatrack solution that um, Pam reviewed with us. So if you can, just take a moment to answer that. That would be great. And let me get to the questions here. Um, Pat, thank you so much for your question. How would you skip items that you are not shipping on the order? Um, if, this is Pam. Um, I think that um, if, I, if I'm understanding the question, um, so in other words, I'm guessing during the pick and the pack price process, if you didn't have something that was in stock um, or not available to pick or you're doing a partial, um, the items on the pick list, you, can't, you don't have to fulfill the entire order. Uh, we do update the batch to identify that only part of it's been picked, and because we are identifying the quantities fulfilled, um, if there was part of that was done, that's the only thing that would be part of the pack, and then that's part of the shipment process. So we do support the, the partial picking um, of a sales order and the packing of a sales order. And then, of course, those remaining line items are still available um, to be picked um, and packed at a later point. And then, Pam, I believe this is for you as well. Can the box number be identified? Thank you, Carol Lynn. Um, can you repeat the question? Can the box number be identified? I'm not sure what uh, the nature of that question exactly. Um, uh, but uh, the shipping box, usually most of our customers are pre-printing uh, license plate numbers that would then be put on the box so that they can simply scan them. Um, and then that also gives the visual for when it gets to the shipping station so somebody can scan it at that point in time. Uh, we don't currently have where we're automating uh, assigning a number. Um, like I said, most of our customers will actually be uh, having that pre-printed number. Um, some customers have gone to the part where they've actually have those barcoded on, on their boxes. Um, so if that's the nature of the question, I'm, I'm guessing that hopefully that answers it. Um, we certainly can entertain um, automating that if they're going to be printing labels uh, from our system. Uh, that would be something that we certainly can uh, evaluate taking a look at to generate a number for the, the next box. And Carolyn, if, if that did not answer your complete question, uh, feel free to go ahead and elaborate in the chat box or the question by clicking your question mark and indicating your question, um, your elaboration on this question. We'd be happy to, to um, answer further. Uh, so does Starship come with GP software? Thank you, Jose. Uh, no, Starship is considered an add-on to Dynamics GP, um, so there would be, you know, a licensing fee involved. Uh, I, can, I can mention that we don't take up any uh, users within GP, and it doesn't require that GP's client be installed and running on the shipping workstation. We access uh, the SQL data directly, and then uh, also, you know, the, the shared tables between uh, Panatrack and, and Starship. And Jose, thank you again. Um, we have another question from Jose. And I just wanted to point out to the audience that uh, there is another poll on the screen. So if you can, just take a moment to answer, are you interested in learning more about Starship shipping software? And that's the last poll. I won't ask any more of you. Um, let's see. How many freight companies 
can we use with Starship? Uh, sure. Uh, so on the parcel side, uh, we offer integration to UPS, FedEx, DHL, Post Office with Indicia, Speedy, OnTrack, as well as a user-defined option that can be used for uh, will call pickups or local deliveries, re regional parcel carriers or courier services. On the LTL side, uh, there's also you know UPS freight and FedEx freight that you get with the parcel modules, and there's a dozen other carriers that we offer. Um, all national carriers, uh, names that you would recognize, such as Yellow, uh, Old Dominion, RNL, SIA, Conway. Uh, there's a complete list up on the, uh, the Starship website. Uh, we're also working on integration for three additional carriers later this year scheduled for release. Uh, first up, I believe, is Averitz, and then Dayton Freight is coming next. And then uh, I'm not sure which, uh, may possibly Pitt, Ohio, is slated for the end of the year. And Jose, thank you so much for this next question. When we selected a product that has other assets that go with it, do we have to single pick every, I'm sorry, my screen just went to um, the other question. Do we have to single pick every item so let me um, re-announce that. When we select a product that has other assets that go with it, do we have to single pick every item? And I think that's for you, Pam. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if this is referencing um, picking a kit uh, with on the sales order in Dynamics or if there's other things that potentially somebody's assembling together. Um, there's, we have lots of different strategies and workflows to handle multiple things, so some of our customers would provide, uh, we have a ability to uh, license plate, not on the shipping box ID necessarily, but we also have, um, if we're using multiple bins, the ability to group inventory together. So for example, um, something very similar to probably what this question is, if I've built a pallet of, of 20 different items on the pallet um, as a, as a for going out to a customer, maybe for an Amazon order, for example, um, we do have the ability to scan basically kind of that same license plate. Could also be used as your shipping box or your license plate for the shipping side as well and carry over, or can be different uh, without having to rescan. So if you're doing a pack, or a pick that's actually going to pack it together and assemble it, and it's part of the pick process or the pack process, the second portion. Um, we can streamline that so you don't have to rescan everything again. So we do have options to be able to uh, set up a different um, workflow for you in that situation. And uh, thank you, Brenda, for this question. We are getting ship gear to use with our world ship that we currently use. Will that still have the license plate capability? Uh, no, ship gear is uh, simply a uh, quick and easy utility that moves order header data between Dynamics GP and your world ship software. There's no item level detail and you would need Starship in order to integrate with, uh, with Panatrack and have the license plate functionality that we demonstrated today. So we can certainly follow up with Brenda and get her more information on Starship and the differences with ship gear though. Perfect. So that um, question, Brenda, will be aligned to your name on the registration report. So Chris will get back to you with more detail on that. And Adrian, and then, I'd like to, Adrian, I'd like to add one more comment for that. If, if you're looking for, um, if your shipping doesn't require that you have to have it on a pack level, but you want to just have it so a packing list prints, um, it, you could potentially do that if your shipment doesn't require going down to that pack level. You can still use the license plating in the shipping box uh, feature to print out a packing list from our system um, to get a packing list for that or a bill of lading that would identify the pack for the customers. We do have some customers that do have that set up that way. And Chris, it looks like Carol's question about the box, identifying the box numbers um, mm -hmm. might have been for you. I meant in Starship where the two boxes were shown in the drop down as box box. Okay. D do you want to share my screen again, make me the presenter? I can, I can probably address that better if I show. 
Let me close out this poll, and then your screen will be, um, let me get you back on. Okay, so you should be presenter, Chris. Perfect. All there right. you go. So uh, within Starship, uh, this is a shared table between uh, the Panatrack solution and Starship. You can define whatever you want to call the box, whether it be by the dimensions, a unique name, um, any of the carrier packaging uh, is in there by default. Um, so you can you can build that out to reflect whatever you want to call it. I just happened to use one that was called box, but uh, you're in control of the naming convention, um, and it can be numerical, um, you know, anything that you want to call it really. Uh, so here's one creating a box. You give it a unique name. You define what type of container it is, and then you can store the dimensions with that. Okay, great. So, um, Pam, this is for you. This one's for you. Is Panatrack a purchase or subscription-based model? Thank you, Kenny. Pam, do we still have you? Sorry about that. I was on mute. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, um, yes, uh, we do offer uh, a couple of different options. We, you can purchase the software um, and the hardware as well. We do. We are a reseller for the mobile computers uh, that our software operates on. Uh, we also do offer software as a service. So if you are looking at implementing GP um, in a hosted environment that you're doing a subscription um, side, we do offer that for our software. Um, the hardware, um, unfortunately, we aren't able to, to do it in that manner, but um, certainly the software we can set up that way. Um, and many of our customers also uh, evaluate doing a leasing option. The hardware can be actually leased, where at the end of the lease you potentially then own that hardware and our software, and you can in, um, bundle that in. So we can work with you in a lot of different ways um, on that investment. And in our site, we are going to use Panatracker GP more on inventory management. So more on receiving and dispensing, no sales and shipping. What's the best process to use to complete transactions? Thank you, Edwin. Uh, again, that's a very, very good question. Um, I certainly would encourage you to get in touch with us and we can schedule a demo of all of the functionality outside of the pick and the pack that we do offer. Uh, we have everything from being able to uh, handle the receiving process, uh, site transfers, uh, the stock count. Um, if you're issuing inventory through adjustment transactions or project accounting, uh, using project accounting transfers or any of those, uh, we do offer an end-to-end -end solution. So, um, and we do offer this as a module. So if you're not using sales orders, um, that's not functionality that you necessarily have to purchase. So I would encourage you uh, to certainly uh, reach out to us and we can get some information and then you can sc uh, schedule a demo with us to walk through the balance of those transactions. And Chris, this one is for you. Thank you, Stephen. Does Starship connect to modified fields in GP? Uh, I guess I'm not really sure what he means by modified fields. Um, we can get Stephen a list of all the fields that we connect to out of the box. Um, we do have the ability to connect to extender fields in GP. Maybe that's what he's asking um, through the use of the SQL extension. Uh, so if it's in GP, um, you know, we can get to uh, a number of fields out of the box uh, at the order header level, customer card, your inventory, uh, item fields, and then uh, the SQL extension would open up pretty much in any field to read or write to. And Stephen, if you want to elaborate on that, we'd be happy to um, have Chris elaborate on his answer. And another question from Kenny, thank you. Does Panatrack support a multi-function pick pack? Full case with piece pick pack on the same order along with that, does it support a replenishment to active inventory? 
Wow, okay. Um, well, as we covered, um, we do have a lot of different um, pick pack um, workflow options available. Again, I, I think I would encourage um, you to reach out to us so we can kind of walk through what you're trying to do and then tailor um, a one-on-one -on -one demo with you to be able to walk through that process. Uh, we do also offer uh, stock replenishment functionality. So uh, that is got, that's a customizable uh, transaction uh, module that we do have that you can identify. Do you want that to be put in either um, a directed transfer or a directed uh, movement of inventory where we can actually present a pick list to move inventory even to different sites or to between uh, overstock bins to stocking bins. Uh, again, we have a lot of different options available. We certainly would welcome you to uh, reach out to us uh, so we we'll capture some more information and we'd be happy to put together a one-on-one uh, -on -one demo for your specific requirements. And uh, Kenny, thank you again for this question too. Um, does it support EDI? If so, can you speak to that a little? How do how do ASNs get billed or built, sent, etc.? Uh, Chris, I think I'll probably send that to you. I mean, our shared tables will capture the pack and the, the shipment details. Um, and then uh, we do work, both of us do work with a number of EDI solutions as they can source those same ship pack tables. And uh, Chris, I'll let you elaborate because uh, typically the, the handoff is at the shipping point. So I'll let Chris elaborate more to, on, on that. Sure. Uh, so Starship has the ability to generate the uh, SSCC number or the serialized container ID um, that's uh, used to identify each of the boxes for your trading partner or your pallets. Uh, also has the ability to um, uh, generate the ASN number and create 128 labels out of Starship. And those will come in the same sequence as your regular shipping labels, your uh, other shipping documents like the bill of lading, packing list, etc. Um, in terms of the EDI solution, it, it varies between uh, EDI solutions and, and the implementation. Uh, in, in some cases, uh, people can look in the shared tables that we have and scoop data out of there. Uh, Starship also has SQL views that can be used to grab data there. Uh, many EDI solutions that we work with have some standard uh, bolt-on modules that will uh, look at Starship's uh, XML, we, we can stage an XML file at the same point that we're updating the shared Panatrack tables and uh, GP with the order detail, or the shipment detail rather. Uh, we stage this XML file that goes to a directory, the EDI solution pulls that directory and then they, they parse out whatever elements are required for that particular trading partner. Uh, there's also an end of day batch file that Starship can create uh, that uh, you're in control of, it's a built in function that uh, can basically give you a flat file with any data that you require from Starship. Uh, so there's you know several different approaches. It really just uh, depends on which solution you're using and, and how they want to uh, tackle that for you. And we have one last question. Can I use Starship to send over C? You can. Uh, so anywhere that the carrier service, um, UPS, FedEx, DHL, and the post office offer uh, you know, parcel delivery service to pretty much anywhere in the world. Uh, FedEx Air Freight is available as well as part of uh, the standard packages. And for the most part, all the LTL carriers go into Canada. I believe Yellow or YRC, Yellow and Roadway, are the only ones that uh, will take it uh, from the States into Mexico. Uh, we don't offer... Uh, direct support for ocean or air freight or uh, freight forwarders necessarily. Uh, we can give you an inland bill of lading uh, and some export documentation as well as an SLI, a shipper's letter of instruction that you can hand off to your, your broker or your freight forwarder that's arranging the international freight uh, for you. Uh, but uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's primarily parcel and uh, LTL into Canada. And that's it for the questions. Um, thank you, everybody. It looks like we're ending here 15 minutes early. If you do have any last minute questions, please feel free to go ahead and click on that question mark button and we'll announce your question for the presenters. If not, thank you so much again for spending this time with us. And uh, we will definitely be in touch. We're going to send a uh, an email with all the contact information of both Pam and Chris. 
so that you can reach out and they will be back in touch with you. And I just wanted to go ahead and let uh, Pam or Chris, would you like to offer any closing remarks? Um, just uh, this is Pam. I just want to thank everybody, everybody for joining. Um, you're, you had great questions. Um, certainly for those that did have some additional questions and some of the additional features and functionality, uh, we do offer uh, complimentary one-on-one -on -one demos. Um, so we certainly can. Uh, if you get in touch with uh, in touch with me, we can get those scheduled. Um, so you can walk through the additional features and the functionality that we have um, in addition to the pick and pack um, or specific uh, workflows that you're looking to put in place. Um, again, thank you. And uh, Chris, I'll leave it for you for the final remarks. Uh, sure. Uh, same here, essentially. Uh, we offer one-on-one -on -one demos uh, by appointment. So if you want to reach out to me, feel free. The contact information is up on the screen here, the general contacts, uh, but uh, we'll be following up with everyone after the webinar with uh, the recording and any additional questions, feel free to respond to that. I'm always available via email or by phone and uh, I'd be happy to you know, dive deeper into any questions that you might have on this particular functionality or anything else that Starship offers. And Chris, we do have one last question. Um, sure. What is the fee for Starship and um, do you need Panatrack with it? Uh, fees are uh, based on concurrent users and there's a licensing fee for each carrier. So the price will be unique to whichever mix of options you need. Um, ballpark figured to buy in with one carrier and, uh, and a one user license it typically starts at about 3300 um, You don't need Panatrack necessarily. Um, but as I showed initially, um, you, you're just shipping against GP and, and the, uh, the order header and the line items come over loose and you'd have to do all of the, uh, the pick and, and the pack or essentially just the pack on the Starship screen. So there's quite a bit of uh, more functionality that, uh, that the Panatrack solution will, will extend to your, your GP implementation uh, beyond just what it does with, with Starship. So uh, I'm sure Pam could speak to whatever questions they may have on that, that end. Perfect. And again, everybody, um, your questions will be aligned to your name on the registration report and either Pam or Chris will get back to you to elaborate as far as answers. And uh, we just thank you everybody for uh, spending this hour with us and we will be back in touch. Thank you, Pam, and thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.